financial stress causes all kinds of results. All anybody ever does is treat the symptom. Let's get to the cause. And debt is the cause. We're going to talk about some of the remedies for doing that. Um, originally, we had set up to do some much more extensive things in the court process. And we're still going to do some things, but not quite in the way that we were going to do them. Uh, we are going to begin a process of building on this process so that in the future when we do these, and we're planning on doing these seminars once a month, uh, that this will come a, become a much more extensive part of what we do. Um, we welcome your participation uh, and your input in that process. This afternoon, um, uh, we're going to have a unique opportunity to talk about fear and guilt. And uh, our fine lady that moderates our conference calls, Sheila Dufleck from Washington, is going to come and speak to us about uh, fear and guilt and the role it plays uh, in our lives. How many people do you know that won't answer the phone because there's a debt collector on the other end of the line? And we're going to talk about how to overcome that, that fear. And then we're going to go uh, deeply into um, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act uh, this afternoon. And uh, we're going to go through and do some actual uh, phone conversations that, that have been had with debt collectors. We're going to talk about it, how, what they can do and what they can't do. I guess I'll give you a little bit more about us and what we do here. Um, in this office, uh, we have changed our role from what we were doing even a couple of months ago, from actually doing work for people to change our whole focus to educating people. Without education, we don't want to act. We don't want to act for other people anymore. We want other people to know and understand what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, so we want to bring that information that we have that would enable people to act for themselves uh, to the public in general or to a potential client or customer if they would like to have the information. That's what this is all about. Um, for four years I've gone around the country doing seminars and I've been from New York to Florida to California to Washington and all points in between and spoken to groups of this size up to almost 200 people. If you take a group of 100 people and you give them the information that you have, five of them will get the information. Out of that five, two will act on that information. And out of the two, one might stay with it. Why? Because they really don't understand. Now, there's people here that are at the beginning level, and there's people here that are very advanced. Now, how do you start in a seminar uh, at a level that everyone can get something out of it? We're forced to start at the beginning, aren't we? And if we're forced to start at the beginning, then you have to get the beginning information. And then you have to be able to go from the beginning information to the next levels of education. We had a level three, level four meeting in this other room yesterday, literally. The information that was in there uh, was fantastic. How do we get that to, the, to everyone in a manner in which they understand it? You can't unless you start back at the basics, and that's what this is. This is the basics. You, you don't build a storm shelter uh, without digging a hole first or digging some type of a fortress that you can then put the pieces together uh, that makes it work. You don't take all the food out and set it outside while you build your building or your shelter. 
It's one step at a time and you have to start at the beginning. And if your foundation isn't laid, the shelter collapses. So we're going to talk about how to lay that foundation and why. I'm going to talk, and you're going to hear a lot of talk, about a customer-driven business. This is, after all, a business because we all have to live. We have to do something. 1,800 people got laid off this week in one company here in Boise. 1,800 people are now in the job market. What are they going to do? It's said that 110 million people, and I go back to this, make their minimum credit card payment. 110 million people. Well, I would venture to guess that those 1,800 people that just lost their job, uh, most of them have credit cards. And most of them are now making the minimum payment. And most of them have now had a financial dysfunction in their life that's going to cr cause them some pain. Where are they going to go for answers? When you have a conversation, just in general, around town, and someone says to you, what do you do? What do you tell them? I know what I tell them. Do you really want to know? Do you have time? Are you willing to listen? How many times does someone walk up to you and say, hi, how are you? You know what I say? Do you have time? Do you really want to know? And, or if I say, well, I'm fine, how are you? And they tell me, well, I'm fine, I say, why? Why are you fine? Stimulate a thought process in another person. And you know what? You'll begin to connect with that person and other people and other people and other people. And pretty soon, you're dealing with another person in their life. And maybe you have something to offer them. Maybe you have something to help them. That's what this is about. That's what this office is about. We take phone calls all day long here to people that need help. And the first thing they need is an answer. And you know what the, the question is? Can you help me? How many times a day does your phone ring and somebody says, can you help me? More and more for those of us who are really out there doing it. Well, what kind of answer do we have for them? If we're going to be a customer-driven company and we're going to be out there helping people, we have to have an answer. And that answer has to be a good one. And you know what? You have to say no sometimes. Not very often, but sometimes you have to say no. Why? Well, it may be circumstances just dictate that you can't do anything. But you should try and find somebody who can help. That's what a customer-driven company does. How many times have you been to McDonald's and you go through the drive through window and you make an order and you go through the bag and your order isn't complete? And you go in and you say, why is this? And if you get, if you get upset with them, they say, well, you know what? You don't have to, to um, come here. You're right. You have so many customers, it doesn't matter, does it? How many companies do you deal with that have that attitude? That they have so many customers that they don't care whether or not you're their customer or not. We don't have that situation. We don't want that situation. I don't care if it's 100, 1,000, or 10,000. If, if you don't have time for that customer, then close the door. If you don't have time for that person, then don't ask the question. Don't ask the question, how are you? Is everything OK? If you don't have time to hear the answer. That's a customer-driven business. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah, we all came here to learn 
or to a, a increase our understanding of this process. But this seminar is being done so that we can take this information in another media and furnish it to people so that they'll have an understanding and maybe 